Oh, all right. Hmm? Did you get Albert home safely? Yeah, I got him home safely, all right, Rodney. <laughs> <laughs> Morning, son. Morning. You're back. Boomerang Trotter always comes back. What happened? What happened? I'll tell you what happened. I drove him all the way back to North London, right through the bleeding rush hour. And what did we find when we got there? Stan and Jean have moved. <laughs> no, you... What do you mean, move? What do you mean, what do I mean? They hooked a the caravan on the back of the Cortina and they've had it away. <laughs> this was lying where the caravan once stood. It's just me, clothes and a few personal belongings. Yeah. You mean that's all you've got in the world? No, no, we've got to go back tomorrow to pick up his parrot. <laughs> How could they do this to me, eh? That is disgusting, isn't it? I mean, deserting him like that. Yeah, it ain't the first time it's happened either. I mean, I think there should be a law or something against that. Yeah, I know. All I want to know is where they've got... Yeah, what did you say just then? I said it ain't the first time it's happened either. Do you remember your cousin Audrey? I went and stayed with her and her husband, Kevin, for a year. One day, he sent me down to Sainsbury with a shopping list. When I come back, they'd emigrated. <laughs> <laughs> Not a jiggly bird to me, though. <clears throat> then there was young Julian, you know, Patsy's girl. I went over there to give her a bit of comfort because her husband was on nights. Six months later, she sets fire to the house. <laughs> she got three months medical supervision for that. I can remember thinking as I stood on the ledge and jumped into the fireman's net. That's gratitude for me. <laughs> <coughs> oh, and I've got a funny feeling, Dale. <laughs> so have I, Rodney. I feel like a turkey who's just caught Bernard Matthews grinning at him. <laughs> what should I do with these, then? I'll tell you what you ought to do with those, shall I? You put them in here, right? In they go, they go in there, cos you're not staying here, all right? No, of course not. Just for a couple of days, that's all. No, 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 not for a couple of days, not for one day. There's a seaman's mission down there in St Catherine's Dock. You go down there, go on. Well, I thought I'd just have a look at a local paper and find myself some digs. Yeah, that's a good idea, Uncle. They'll have a local paper down at the mission. Now, go on, fling your hook. Yeah, all right, Dale. You don't mind if I have a quick cup of tea, do you? No, go on, there's a flask of cold tea out there and some volivons from yesterday. Go on, you have <laughs> Cheers, son. Oi. Hmm? What are you doing, winding him up? Yeah, yeah, I'm winding him up, and I'm winding him up. Hell, he only wants to stay for a couple of nights and get himself sorted out. He's a trotter, Rodney. We're trotters! Yes, I know, but we take after mum in nature. He's from Dad's side of the family. You know what they're like. You offer them a cup of tea and they think you've adopted them. Look at that time when Dad came round here. He wanted to stay one night. Took us nine a fortnight to get rid of him. But Uncle Albert might not be like that. Oh, leave it out, Rodney. You've heard him yourself when he was telling us about that time he came round the Cape of Good Hope. He was three months on the same wave. <laughs> I don't believe you, Del. I do not believe that you, of all people, could... Where do you think you're going? I'm going down the calf. I'm going to get some grub and some better company. <laughs> I'm going to put some clothes on. <laughs> it's all your fault, Rodney. And I don't start all that again. Well, it is. I mean, ever since you were like that, oh, you've done nothing but hold me back. I held you back? Yeah. I mean, when Mum died, I should have had you put in care. I would have been someone by now. I would have done, I would have probably had my own penthouse and I'd have had Aston Martin with a telephone and all that. Well, I'll tell you something, Dill. You'd have been doing me a favour if you'd had me put into care. Cos at least then I might have got a proper job when I left school instead of humping your old suitcase all over London. But you didn't want to leave school, did you? If it had been up to you, you would have been there drawing your old age pension, wouldn't you? <laughs> I only wanted to stay there while I got my GCE in maths and art. And a lot of good they've done, the firm. The only time your GCE has come in handy was that time I asked you to count them tins of paint. <laughs> Bloody hell's that? Oi. Hmm? Don't think it was that deep fryer, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to stay to find out. Come on, let's look lively. Come on. Dale! Yeah, we just won't be a minute, yeah, love. Just just it's your Uncle Albert! What about Uncle Albert? He's fallen down our cellar, quick! 
Falling down the cellar. I have a fish ticket. Well? No. No. No, Del. The old neck's gone. No, no, no. I mean, what happened? Oh, I don't know. I just looked up and there was Uncle Albert plummeting towards me. Me? Oh, John, where is he? Oh, he's over there somewhere. How the hell did he get over there? He hit the plank and bounced. <laughs> he went through the airlock, one of them springboard divers. <laughs> My neck down half hurt, Del. Your oh. neck? Your neck? Uncle Albert nearly ends up in a jumbo's flight path and all you can think about is your rotten Gregory. Oh, come on. You all right? Oh, I'm a bit shaken and dazed, Rodney. Yeah, probably jet lag. Yeah. <laughs> come on, get him onto his feet, Rodney. Come on. Up you come. Fancy leaving an open yeah. cellar door unguarded. Oh, a good mind to sue the brewery. Yeah, put your arm around Rodney. Sue the brewery? Put him down. What the hell do you think you're doing? <laughs> yeah, you Pick him up. I know what I just said, it? but you don't know what sort of damage he's done. He might have broken something. Yeah, he has. About four dozen bowls of guineas. <laughs> Come on, Dill. There's nothing wrong with him. He said so himself. Yeah, but how does he know that? How does he know that? He might have hit his head and got percussion. And that he... <laughs> hey, look, the first thing to do in first aid is never move the victim, right? You'll have to move me soon, Del. The last bell's just gone. Can you see that? He's got ringing sounds in his ears. <laughs> this is even worse than I thought, Rodney. Quick, nip upstairs and get on a telephone. Right. Yeah, phone for a solicitor. Yeah. <laughs> a solicitor? Yeah. Del, you can't sue. <laughs> you don't want to put money on it, do you, eh? Him falling down that hole could be the biggest bit of luck we've had in years. But, Del, if he'd hurt himself, there'd be little signs, wouldn't there? Like blood and pain. His hat ain't come off. How's that, all right? <laughs> don't give us all that Quincy cobblers, Rodney. You don't know how bad I am. You see, you don't know how bad he is. Now, quick, whip upstairs and phone Solly Atwell. You'll find his number in the uh, yellow pages. Go on, look lively. Solly Atwell's our solicitor. Yeah. Bloody hell, he's more bent than a villain's. <laughs> he's just the sort of man we need in a case like this, a specialist. Go on, get on the blower. All right, you don't mind if I phone for an ambulance first, though, yeah? Ambulance. Ambulance, good thinking. That looked great on the report. Well done, Rodney. <laughs> Come on, away you go. <laughs> Del Brewery are going to pay through the nose for this. I told you something would turn up, didn't I, Del? That's all right, Uncle. You just conserved your oxygen. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Albert, did I hear you groaning in pain? No. Well, why not? Come on. Oh, oh. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Nothing? You mean I've had stomach plumps and enemies, glucose strips, <laughs> students drawing all over me belly with felt top pins, and, and there's nothing wrong with me? Oh, it's great, isn't it, eh? <laughs> I noticed you didn't come and see me last night. I suppose you're too busy visiting that dog. Fight for your country and risk your life in sea and flame. And <laughs> you get old and everyone forgets you. Listen here, you silly old sausage. <laughs> we couldn't come and visit you last night because you was under observation. Oh, don't give that to me, son. Well, we bought you some grapes. Yeah? <laughs> Where are they? We ate them. <laughs> I lay here last night, tubes sticking out of every place you could stick them in. <laughs> Couldn't sleep, pills wouldn't even work, and all the time you two were eating my grapes. Oh, come on. We did miss you last night. <coughs> did you? Yeah. <laughs> we had no one to spit the pips at. <laughs> come on, Jules, get him out of here. He's giving me the hump. <laughs> Any problems? Mm -hmm. No, Doctor, mm. there's nothing wrong with me. I feel full of fitness and vitality. Good. Well, bye for now, Mr. Trotter. See you again. Not if I see you first, shipmate. It's all right. <laughs> Come on. Come on, hurry up. We're going to get you home. Oh, the moaning, miserable old oh, git. He don't stop, does he? And we got him all that treatment, and that's all for nothing. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and does he think anything of it? No, does he yell? Oh, by the way, hmm? sister gave me these. Why, what's the matter with you? <laughs> no, no. She found them in your uncle's locker. Oh, I see. Patients are not allowed to bring their own medication into the hospital. Bear that in mind for future. Mm-hmm. <laughs> What's he doing with these, then? 
These are Juki's vitamin tablets. No, they ain't. Those are Albert's sleeping pills. I've got his vitamin tablets here. <laughs> no. You've been giving Juki his sleeping pills. <laughs> on the sideboard and I just... Oh. <laughs> Albert's been on the Bob Martins. <laughs> no wonder he's full of vitality. <laughs> what shall we do? It's just don't throw him any sticks. That's... <laughs> shall we tell him? No, no, no. It's a, no, it's a bit unfair, isn't it, after what he's been through. Uh, yeah. yeah, let's tell him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, look, he's, he's miserable enough as it is, isn't he, eh? Yeah. Yeah. You probably think he's going to turn into a werewolf or something. <laughs> so we just keep stum about the whole thing and no one will be any the wiser, right? Just want to keep a very close eye on him when he goes past lampposts and things. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait. Wait, come on then, Uncle. Well, we're going to get you home, and then uh, <laughs> Rodney's going to take uh, Dukey out for a, for a run, you see? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, you can come as well, if you like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's the matter with you two? Uh, nothing. 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 No. Well, come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> come on, boy. Come on. Come on. <laughs> what's he brought us here for? Gold nose. I don't like these places. They make me feel queasy. Oi, so are you two. No, it's nothing. It's just hell, but he don't feel too well. How bad is he? I mean, is it worth our while taking him home? <laughs> oh, I ain't that bad, Kel. <laughs> oh, good. Well, you just sit back and enjoy yourself, then. Enjoy ourselves? Del, we are £2,000 in debt. We have a garage load of hooky doors and a mob of irate Rastafarians after our blood. <laughs> so what are we doing hanging around Mum's monument? Because I always come here in times of trouble, Rodney. Just come here and stand here and tell Mum my problems. And somehow she always seems to provide an answer. She never let me down yet. I mean, you take that time when you was done for the possession of cannabis. I just came here and I told Mum that her little baby was in trouble with the law. And it was almost as if I could hear her voice saying to me, Bribe the old Bill, Del. <laughs> and what happened? When the case came to court, the police could provide no evidence. You told me you got a 250 quid fine and a suspended sentence. Yeah. Well, three days before the trial, this plonker pleaded guilty by post. <laughs> Mum wasn't to know that, was she? <laughs> now, don't worry, she'll come up with a solution to our financial plight. Come on, sit yourself down. Relax, Rodders. <sighs> oh, just look around, Rodney. Just think. One day all us trotters will be here. Well, I don't know about you. <laughs> it's all right, Joe. I'm with the co-op. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, back in the 60s, I bought us all the plot. You know, I thought, well, land was going to be a good investment, wasn't it, eh? Can't go wrong, Del, can you? No. <laughs> See, I'll be uh, over there next to Mum and Granddad. Well, he's already here over in the, the gardens of external peace. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you, uh, <clears throat> we See, look. See right over there? Right over the back there. Look. Yeah. Yeah. See that? Can you can see the big pile of stinging nettles? <laughs> Stinging nettles? I'm going to be buried under a pile of stinging nettles. I ain't going to bother you, Rodney, is it? Because you're going to be brown bread. And <laughs> when his family come to pay their respect. He won't have no family, will he? Because I'll be over there next to Mum and you'll be picking up your divvies. <laughs> he'll be married by then. How's his widow going to tend his grave when it's covered in stinging nettles? Well, she'll have to buy herself a decent pair of gardening gloves, wouldn't she? <laughs> I've got a beautiful pair of gardening gloves in the garage. They retail at 4 75 normally. You can have them for a nicker. I don't want any gardening gloves. <laughs> it's 
charming that is, isn't it, mate? Char Never a thought for the poor old missus. There she'll be with swelling and blotches all over her hands, a poor little mare. God. I don't believe this conversation. It's <laughs> In 35 seconds, you two have married me, buried me, and given me widow skin trouble. <laughs> Into a future, ain't you, Uncle? Not if I can help it, Uncle. Oh, yeah. I like looking into the future. I find it very reassuring to know that whatever happens down here in this mortal curl, that one day we'll all be together up there in heaven, forever and ever. Amen. Do you believe in all that heaven and what have you? Oh, yeah, it's true. I read it in a book. <laughs> well, we can't leave him out there, can we? Well, what do you want to do, then? Phone the Coast Guards? <laughs> oh, I mean, a bloody great pike can come up and have him for his supper. No, one of us is going to have to go and get him. Come on, Rodney, I'll hold your shoes. Hey, I ain't going in there. This is no time for second thoughts. Look, that is not a butterfly out here. That is Denzil's money. So how come I've got to go in and get it? Cos I'm not a very good swimmer. Nor am I. I know, but you're taller than me, ain't you? Take you longer to drown. <laughs> so it's only shallow. How shallow? Well, I don't know, do I? Get in and see. What's Rodney doing? I don't know, it's the backstroke, I think. <laughs> Our free grand, you see, look, it's out there on that lily pad. Well, I begged him, I begged him not to go in. Pity you weren't here. This is right up your street, this, isn't it? Oh, I can't swim, Del. He used to be a sailor. <laughs> don't mean a thing. Nelson couldn't swim. Of <laughs> course well, he couldn't, he'd only got one bloody arm. <laughs> he'd have to go around in circles, wouldn't he? <laughs> Oh, Rodney, you see? Not, not as bad as you thought, is it? You pushed me! I did not, did not push you, just gave you a little bit of encouragement. Anyway, come on, Rodgers, you're in now. Yeah, I'm getting out now, I know. No, 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 no. Just, just a minute, just, just a minute. Not, not ten yards, not ten yards from you, right, is one of the rarest, most beautifulest of God's little tiny creatures. And then Wally's in that magazine of yours, are going to give us three grand for it. But I don't care, Eric, I'm still getting out. Listen, no, listen, listen. But we give Denzel back his two grand and there's a, there's a grand in it for ourselves. I thought you said you'd give Denzel three grand. It's funny that, cos Denzel thought I said that and all. <laughs> Everyone's a winner. Don't I? What'd you say? Nice and gently, Rodney. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Easy now. Don't splash. Go slowly. Don't disturb it. And there you go. Got it. Got it. Good boy. Good boy. Come on. <laughs> I bet I'll get a cold next week now. Oh, shut up, you tar. This <laughs> water will make my hair go frizzy. Don't worry, the alopecia will soon cure that. <laughs> oh, careful! Rodney, just remember, if you get into difficulties, save the butterfly, all right? Stuff the butterfly? Rodney, <laughs> stop that. There are very few of them things left in the world. There are millions of you. <laughs> nice and easy, Rodney. Almost there. Oh, careful! Got it, got it. Is he all right, Dill? Yeah. It's a bit wet, but he'll survive. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the old sun will soon dry you out, won't it? And then I'm going to take you down to the nice man who's going to give your Uncle Belly Welly free, lovely grand. <laughs> Denzel! I've got your money! Great. See you down the pub later. <laughs>